Once we, we had the challenge of making streetcar into ballet, we, we realized that in a, in a way what we had to do is look at it and say, how do you tell this story through dance? As opposed to trying to imitate uh, speech. It's a real treat not to have to use words. I really like that challenge. I find it really fascinating. The idea that you can tell the whole story without the words. And I think when I do work with words, I'm always trying at the same time to be telling the story visually, so that if somebody in the audience couldn't understand the words, they would still have an idea of what was going on. In her previous work, Nancy has always had the tendency to make some scenes with movements, and I, as a choreographer, have had the tendency to put the theatrical element in my work, even if it was not narrative. There's always some elements of uh, yeah, theatre in it. It's a good, it's a good mix, yeah. you know. Because... I am very pleased that Nancy <laughs> is here because there's so many details to think of. It's a very difficult story. Um, there's a lot of psychology, there's a lot of details that if you don't get the details, the audience just will not understand the drama. And, you know, you've already done the play, so mm. you know with each scene what is important for us to, to get. Well, if it's a scene that actually probably doesn't have a lot of dance in it, then I might take the dancers aside and try to stage it. And then Annabelle would have a look at it and see how she could enhance things with movement. And by the same token, if it's a, a section that we think should be danced, then I might come in after Annabelle's had a first go at it and say, ah, there's something I don't understand. I don't understand what's happening to this character at this moment. Can you make that clearer? How can we, without words, tell all these elements? And some elements were impossible, so we had to find new images. I think we've really you know, opened, opened it up in order to make it into ballet. And uh, I think what we've been excited about is that the play lends itself to that. It's like the play is asking to be looked at in a new way and in a different way. Um, on stage, you know, they talk about going to the bowling alley. Well, we can actually go to the bowling alley. <laughs> When you normally work with a choreographer, they come in with all the ideas, all the concept and everything, and you kind of put the character with the steps all at once together. Whereas what we've been tending to do is that we will work with Nancy first and work out what the character's needs and what they want to achieve in that situation. And then from that, once we know the characterization that we're trying to uh, obtain, we come in and we add steps to that. You're trying to say pretty big things without doing the dance steps. For example, Stanley puts his leg up on the block and sips a beer and just watches Blanche. This simple action makes her feel very uncomfortable. That nervousness builds from just one look. Normally, lots of effort into movement instead of just a look. You're trying to say so much. I'm trying to make just movement create such an atmosphere. It's really difficult. It's very important that whatever characterization you're creating is far from your own personality it is. You try and interpret it through your own experiences. Otherwise, it comes across as a complete farce. And I think that that's the way that you can get into these characters without, um, without getting nervous about this great actor that did it before you because you can't do it like him, no one can do it like him. Everyone tries perhaps to 
at some point mimic him, but that's all it is, is mimicry. And if you don't put yourself into it, then you're no better, you're just a second-rate copy. It's, it's going to be our way of telling this story, and um, it'll be a completely new way of telling this story. Mm. We discovered that Tennessee Williams had different uh, titles for the piece. And at one time, he was going to call it the moth because he was interested in that image of a very delicate creature, Blanche, who's very attracted to bright light or desire, but who also knows and has a sense that it might kill her. And uh, it's one of the first images now of a, a very delicate creature dancing under a light bulb and having this huge desire to go towards it, but then realizing that she might be burnt by it. We realized quite early on we wanted the story to take place in a very rough space, because the main character, Blanche, is a very vulnerable person, and she's trying to survive in a, a rough world. So we, we knew that we wanted something very rough, and we, first we talked about it being some kind of a wasteland, but then Nikki, the designer, came up with the idea of, well, what if it felt like it was an abandoned railway station? The whole idea of Blanche arriving in New Orleans and the kind of the fragility that comes with her character and the kind of moth-like quality that she has drew me to the very, using very, very pale, fragile fabrics, very kind of chiffony against the harder, metal industrial surface of the set. Blanche kind of moving around a light bulb was the first time we were kind of drawn to the idea of a light bulb. The kind of the industrial feelings of stations, you get the sense of lots of lights hanging in these areas. We thought that we could then use the elements of light bulbs if we then had them in rows to actually create different scenes. We wanted to create an atmosphere in the design that would enable the different scenes to be kind of conjured up and then disappeared and conjured up again. You see, you know, two rows of dancers creating a train. It's a little bit more abstract, like it's just an image. And also at the end, we have an, really an image that's going to portray a, an emotion, a state of mind, instead of just being a, a, an anecdotal scene. You can't have that in a movie or in a, in a theatre play. You can have that because we have 30 dancers. People who know the play well, I think, will be quite surprised. But at the same time, it will look familiar to them. It's a really interesting idea that they've got with the set. I think the fact that it comes from this pile of rubble and out of that rubble comes the sort of spaces and the rooms and all the different furniture and... The train. And, and the train and everything. It comes from just boxes. I think that's really clever. With Blanche's character, she resembles the moth. Uh, we have a minimal black and white setting, and then this warm single spotlight creates the image of warmth and freedom. And then later on, this, which um, in her younger years attract and uh, inspired her, can also kill her, is a very clever way to show how lonely she at times felt. And I think it's also really interesting that as a dance company, what you probably expect to see is the opulent tutus and all of that sort of thing. Whereas actually in this ballet and in the play before it, of course, you're facing some pretty extreme situations. You know, you've got domestic violence in there and you've got a, a lot of quite big problems that we have in our society and they're facing them through dance. A lot of the time people talk about, is dance still relevant? Well, I think by doing this, we completely make ourselves relevant because we are still talking about topical and current events.